Good morning and hearty welcome. I am Sister Katrikuti, Assistant Professor from the Department of English, St. Joseph's College for Women Autonomous. Presuming that you enjoyed the topic of yesterday, which was writing a winning resume, I welcome you to today's session on success in interviews. Job interview provide candidates and their future employers to decide how well their skills align with the company's requirements. Job interviews allow you to get better acquainted with your future colleagues and obtain information about them to help you decide if that particular job is the right one for you. I now welcome the resource person, Mrs. Vicki Hale, to start her session. Thank you. Welcome back to our third and final session. It's been an exciting and a learning experience, I think, for everyone involved. So today we're going to talk about the third aspect of career and professional development. Up to this point, the first day, we reflected. You have looked back. You one have minute. learned. Hmm? Good morning and welcome back everyone to our third and final session of career and professional development. So up to this point, you have reflected. So we're not looking back with regret, but we're looking back in order to learn. You have deconstructed your views, your biases, and your perspectives in order to reconstruct a philosophy of life and goals, something that is global, a big picture, multicultural, open-minded. And you have looked at yourself as an individual ready to impact the world with your unique skills, talents, passions, and creativity. Secondly, on our second day, you have written, or at least you have begun the framework, I hope, of a winning resume. You've included a header, an objective, or an experience Summary, you've listed your education and your work experience, and they have bullet points with your skills, your responsibilities, your duties. And then you also have a section probably on some non-work related items, such as extracurricular activities or uh, certificates, awards, many different things can be included here, achievements. You have prepared a list of references that is not on your resume, but you have it prepared. You have triple proofed your resume for any typos or grammatical errors. And you have contemplated the best way, the best format, the best way to have it stand out, to look different than everybody else's. Maybe you've even prepared a supplementary visual resume to attach to your cover letter and professional resume. And that means that you have written a cover letter, at least the outline, all right? You have researched the qualifications of the job position and the organization. What is their mission? What is their vision? What specific job qualifications do they ask for that you have or maybe that you don't have, that you can fake it till you make it? Or 
uh, you have looked over these things in order to prepare for this next step today of attending an interview. You have connected yourself with the description and the mission. And you have begun to be proactive in following up for, a re for an interview. So I think you're ready for the interview, right? But I want you to do one more reflective exercise about your own character and your own personality traits. How would you describe yourself? Now, I want you to think of the resume as the topic sentences. Remember in high school and college when you had to write essays and a paragraph was a topic sentence and supporting sentences and a concluding sentence? OK. So a resume is to topic sentences as the interview is to supporting sentences. So this next exercise is going to help you support the claims that you are making on your resume. So you want to think about. Um, different things that you are going to talk about in your resume. So I'm going to ask you to look at your own personality, your own character. And you can start with a very broad list that describes your own identity. Maybe you're adventurous, active, attentive, compassionate, competitive, courageous, enthusiastic, loyal, generous, curious. There are many, many characteristics. And you can search for a word list of character traits and decide which ones you have. But you must also think of your professional identity. Remember I talked about you have a personal identity and a professional identity, and they're intertwined. So you want to think of words that describe you professionally, ambitious, conscientious, imaginative, organized, dependable, diligent, ethical, versatile, visionary. All of those words and more. But you're not going to use all of them, I promise you. You want to choose some that really help you describe yourself. But I, there are also a few cautionary words that I want you to think about, because you are not going to use all of them. But there are some negative words that lack depth, and words that might have negative connotations that you may not want to use. Let's look at just a few of those. We won't spend a lot of time talking about why, but if you have any questions about why a particular word is a negative word, you can put that in the uh, chat box, and we can talk about that at the end. OK, so words uh, to be careful about using. Committed, extensive experience, independent, outspoken, passionate. I use that word passionate a lot, but you do want to be careful of overusing it. Stubborn, unique, world class, obsessive. OK, so if you have questions about any of those words, let me know. Um, but there are also words that may be too overused, or now they, they have been used so much that they have become cliche. So be careful of these. And some of these are creative, driven, innovative, team player, hardworking, motivated, multitasker. Now, all of these things could be very important skills. And especially, let's look at the middle one, team player. Being a part of a team is very important. But sometimes these words have been a little bit overused. If you use these words, just be sure to back them up with an example of, of you having demonstrated them. OK? So you don't want just want to say, yes, I'm a team player. But you want to talk about a time when you were on a team. You're also going to use these characteristics to think about your strengths and your weaknesses, because those are going to be questions that will be included in your interview. Remember the topic sentence. These characteristics are your, going to be your supporting sentences. Okay. 
So the resume describes uh, many topics that you have been involved in. The interview lets you support them and, and talk about them. Okay, some interview questions are descriptive. Some interview questions are narrative. They, don't, they won't really sound like a question. They want you to describe something, uh, your goals or your dreams or your accomplishments, okay? And others are narrative where the interviewer wants to hear about stories from your life and experiences. And you've done all of that. You've brainstormed about them. They're right on the tip of your tongue, right in your mind. So that's why you have already done your homework. Please, if you haven't up to this point, because it's only been three days, please do those things before you get called for an interview. So you have experiences with skills that are attached to them. You want to think about what character traits demonstrate those aspects. And I'm gonna, you, do you remember the first day and then even yesterday, we did some brainstorming and I had a whole list of my own experiences. So now you want to go back to that list and you're going to use that list to support your experiences. Okay, let me sh let me put one of those examples up on the screen here. Okay, that come that came from my own exercise. Okay, that example was when I volunteered at World Relief, which is a nonprofit organization that helps refugees in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, they're all over the world, but this was in Atlanta, Georgia, and so. Um, I'm going to think about what character traits I displayed uh, when I was doing that. Maybe I was a little courageous because for me it took courage to go and be uh, with some refugees who have left their countries because of war or many other reasons, okay? Uh, maybe it also showed that I'm open-minded and I am willing and ready to accept people from other nations, other countries. Maybe that experience also showed that I was compassionate. And it could also show that I enjoy challenges. It was something I had never done, but I am always ready for a challenge. So I want you to do that. Wait, look, go look back at your brainstorm of experiences, and you've already decided which ones are for the resume, which ones are for the interview. But now I want you to identify some character traits that go along with that so you can see how best to describe yourself. So this is another part of your homework, an important exercise, because you want to think about the reasons why you have chosen this. For me, this was a, this was a good choice for many reasons. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, because uh, the company that I was interviewing with uh, might be involved in refugee or NGOs. And so this shows that I'm active in that area. If my life mission is in line with the mission of the organization, you want to use that experience and those characteristics. Um, I felt like this particular example does show some things about my character, that I'm adventurous that I'm courageous, that I'm ready to try new things. And it also shows my attitude towards people of other cultures and other nations. I'm open-minded and I love meeting new people and learning from them. So it showed a part of my nature, okay, that I am compassionate towards people who are less fortunate than me or who want to learn from one another. And finally, it also showed that I enjoy challenges. So look through your brainstorming experiences, ones that you're going to talk about perhaps in the interview, and think about the character traits that you displayed during those experiences. Don't go into to an interview without having done this homework. Be ready. Uh, this morning I was doing a class with a client that I have in China and she's getting ready for an interview and she said, you know, I've always been so nervous about doing an interview. I'm not, I don't know, I didn't know what questions they were gonna ask or how to answer them. And she said, talking about each of these questions has really helped me and given me the confidence that I need to go into an interview. So I hope that it does the same for you. 
okay? Because everything that you want to say needs to be connected with your character, your dreams, your goals, and the company's mission. The company's job description and vision. You're going to connect these things. You need to go to their website, read about them, and definitely read through the job description so that you are prepared. Don't go into an interview without being prepared. You can even practice with a friend asking one another questions. We do that in my, cl my classroom sometimes when we're doing English for employability. Um, there's nothing quite like preparedness. All right, you are a complex person, but not everything about you is, is relevant to the particular job. So after you have done your homework, personally and professionally, you must prepare yourself for the interview in the way that you look, okay? Even if it's on the telephone, and this was something that my, my son told me, talked to me about because he had to do this during this COVID time. Not everything is in person, right? We do a lot of things on the telephone. We do a lot of things uh, through Zoom, through YouTube. But he's, he even recommended that even if you're having a phone interview, get dressed, sit at the table, sit up straight, feel at least semi-professional, feel ready for the interview. Okay, don't slouch over, sit up straight, uh, have a smile on your face and be ready, even if it's going to be a phone interview. Okay, don't be foolish or sloppy even if you're at home. You should psych yourself. I love that word psych. Um, I don't mean your psyche. When you psych yourself, you're getting ready. It means that you anticipate something. You try to figure something out and you're ready for a performance. Okay, get dressed, sit up straight, take a deep breath and remember all that you've been learning and all that you've been reminiscing about and contemplating and reflecting on, okay? You can do this. All right, so we're going to talk today about the top 15 questions. Now, there are lots of questions and there are questions that are asked in different ways, but they want the same sort of answer. Obviously, we don't, we're not going to look at every single question that could be asked. And that now companies are always trying to think of an unusual question like, when do you use the right side of your brain and when do you use the left side of your brain? I don't have that in the top 15 questions, but they could ask you that. All right, we're going to look at each of the, what I think are the top 15 questions and some of the ways that they are asked. Okay, the first question. Well, it's technically not a question, but it's usually how the interview will start. Tell me about yourself. Okay, it may not be a question, but it's very crucial. It sets the tone for this interview. And um, you don't need to repeat your name. You don't need to, they say, tell me about yourself. You don't need to say your name again or your address because they have your resume right there in front of them, okay? Um, unless you want them to call you something different because maybe you have a nickname or something less formal. Stay professional. Save your non-professional interests for the question when they ask about what do you do in your spare time or um, what do you what are some of your hobbies or interests. Save that, okay? How is your experience, your success, your character pertinent to the job that you are interviewing for? Don't use this moment to summarize your resume. They may ask you, how would you describe yourself? Or if you could use two or three words to describe yourself, what would you say? So there are different ways that this question could be asked of you, but it's usually the opening question. The employer will pay close attention to the words that you use to describe yourself. You can have five or six characteristics that you have thought of, but you're only going to use two or three here, the most relevant attributes for the job that you're applying for. And you may want to tell about this character trait and how it has developed in you, how you have changed or 
how you realized how important that was, okay? This reply to this first question should not be any longer than about two minutes. You don't want to spend too much time talking about your childhood. Now, I do bring that up when someone asks me, tell me a little bit about yourself. Even as old as I am, I usually say, I was brought up in the Air Force. My father was in the Air Force, and we moved every two or three years. But I do that because the job that I'm usually applying for has something to do with another location. And I always want people to know that I'm ready to move, I'm ready cross-culturally, and that aspect of my life is very relevant. So um, I once heard a great answer to this question. Uh, a young lady said, when she was asked, please tell me something about yourself, she said uh, that she has climbed some of the highest peaks. Well, you know, that might be a hobby, but it tells the interviewer a lot about her because it takes organization, it takes courage, it takes skill. There are a lot of uh, character traits that are involved in something that you might have done. So think about this question carefully. Okay, we're ready for question number two. Question number two, what influenced you to choose a career in whatever field you have chosen? Education, engineering, chemical engineering, uh, medical, uh, the medical field, whatever your field is, they want to know what influenced you. How did you decide to pursue this career? So think back on your experiences. Did something happen in your life that has inspired you or steered you toward this career? Or was it a person in the field whose footsteps you would like to follow in? Don't get too emotional. Okay, you don't want, oh, my grandma always wanted me to be an engineer and I didn't want to let her down. That's usually not a good answer because they want to know that what the reasons you chose this field is a part of you and not what somebody else wanted you to do. Okay, um, they want to know you. Are you personally motivated to do this, to pursue this career? And what keeps you pursuing it? If you've already been in this line of work or you started out in your as a bachelor's degree student and you have continued with this, what has kept you interested? And they may also ask if you're fresh out of college, how has your university education prepared you for this job or prepared you for this field? So thinking about the courses that you have taken, the internship you have worked on, or the uh, uh, educational certificates that you have achieved, these may be important here, especially an internship. What courses did you excel in? What personnel, what, what person perhaps in your education, your professor or somebody uh, inspired you? What are your motivations? Are they intrinsic or extrinsic uh, motivations? Um, he, they want to know if you're going to stick with this line of work. They may even ask you what you've been doing during this lockdown. I know this is an odd time for me to bring this in, but it's important for you to think about this time uh, in a productive way. Okay, what have you, what have you been doing? Have you been uh, working on your uh, some of your skills? Have you been learning new skills? What have you been doing? during this time. Or maybe you've taken a gap year and they may want to know what you've been doing during this gap. So be ready to answer those questions. All right, we're ready for question number three. How would you describe yourself in terms of your ability to work as a member of a team? So remember, I put that word team player on the list of cautionary words, but of course, your employee is, employer is going to ask you in some way to describe how you work on a team. Maybe they'll ask you to define teamwork. Maybe they'll ask you about it to tell you about, to tell them about a time when you participated in a team. Okay, so consider that most jobs require some level of teamwork. 
Okay, so the question reaches a little bit deeper than just proving that you can work as a team member. Interviewers also want to know what essential attributes you can contribute to a team. So with that in mind, I've put on the slide a few things that I want you to be sure to keep in mind concerning you as a team member, as a team player. The qualities of a sound work team and the qualities of you as an individual team member. You might be a team leader or you might be a team follower. You might be both at different times, okay? So there are certain qualities that I want you to think about because this is a very crucial question. So first of all, let's look at the things that describe a good productive team, common qualities that successful work teams share. First of all, it's dedication. Everyone on the team should be dedicated to the company's goals and or mission. They should be ready and willing to assist one another in whatever needs to be done. They should have good written and oral communication skills. So if you list communication skills on your resume, be sure to tell them how you communicate with other team members on a team. Uh, teams have good organizational skills because they have to look at each individual team member's strengths and weaknesses and how they can work together. So organizing a team is very important. And of course, we have to put on the uh, list of skills, um, let's see, I think it's the next one, about conflict resolution because teams don't always get along just peachy. Sometimes there are some conflicts and team people working together need to learn how to resolve conflicts successfully and calmly. All right, so there are, that's for the whole team, but there are qualities that you as an individual must think about whether you have those qualities or whether you need to work on those qualities because you have to want the team to succeed, all right? You, you have to want it so bad that you're committed to ensuring that the team succeeds. Um, dedicated is a better word than committed, I think. That you are dedicated, that you are willing to help others, knowing their strengths and weaknesses. There's, there's a willingness about you, okay? You have to be able to inform and talk to other people on the team so that everyone is informed on developments, results of certain steps, and reliability and responsibility. In other words, every team member needs to know that they can rely or depend on the other team members. So this, um, these qualities, I put this as a separate slide because I want you to think about times that you have worked in a team, either as a leader or as a follower, and think about what makes a good team and what part you played in that team. So this is an important question. All right, so we'll go on to question number four. Tell me about a major problem you recently handled. Were you successful in resolving it? This requires a short story about a real experience, not just something generic where I'm a good problem solver. That doesn't work in the interview. It might work on the resume, but in the interview, you need to talk about a specific uh, experience. You can tell a short story about how you made a difficult decision, the process that you used in order to come to a decision because people want to know that you are a decision maker. Or they also want to know how do you handle pressure? How do you handle adversity? So this question, they could be framed in many different ways. They may say, tell me about a time when you had to handle adversity. No matter how they ask this question, they want to know how you deal with professional obstacles. 
No home remedies. You don't get to tell them that you go home and you take a bath, you listen to music, you go for a walk in the garden, or you watch TV. No, you want to think of professional ways that you handle adversity and stress. Explain how you have persevered. Give examples of how you have overcome this adversity. You've sat down, you've talked with other team members, you've talked with your boss, you've, you've looked at different sides of a problem, you've analyzed it, or the obstacle, or it could be that the adversity is criticism from someone else. So there are different ways that you have had to face an obstacle or an adversity, and they want to hear about it, and they want to know the end result. So it's a story. And speaking of stories, question or statement number five is all about stories. It's going to begin with, tell me about a time when. And remember that list from the first day about 21st century skills? All right, so they may use something like this to say, Tell me about a time when you had to think critically. Tell me about a time when you were flexible. Okay, you are ready for this question because you've done all of your reflections. You know the experiences, you've looked at them and what, and you, and you know what they have described in your life, the, qual the qualifications and the competencies uh, and so you're ready for this question. They may ask you, tell me about a time when you took the initiative. Tell me about a time when you had to think both critically and creatively to handle the situation. So the question can come in many forms. Simply tell me about a time when is a simple way. They may say, tell me about a time when you had to choose something else over doing a good job. Hmm. Tell me about a time when you went above and beyond the call of duty. That means when you took the initiative. Tell me about a situation where you were not satisfied with your work and you felt like you could have done better. Tell me about a time when you had to collaborate with a coworker who was tough to please. Tell me about a time when you had to make a good impression the first time you met someone. Tell me about a time when your workload was too heavy. How did you handle that? Tell me about a time when you had a long running project. How did you manage your time? So you see these questions can be framed in different ways. So it's very important to go back to your experiences and look at what skills went with those experiences. We did that on the first day and it, now you see why you, needed, why you need to do that because of this very important interview question. Tell me about a time when. I remember when I was uh, interviewing for my fellowship, the interviewer asked, so tell me about a time when you were flexible. Fortunately, I've had many of those times, so I had one ready, but they are going to use these different skills to ask you about your experience and they wanna hear a story. So you, that's why I had you, now you know why I had you brainstorm about experiences because you're going to use them for these important questions. Okay? I wish we could spend all day on each of these questions. They're so, and, and I could listen to you all. All right. Question number six. What do you think is your greatest skill? Sorry, strength. What do you think is your greatest strength? Professionally, what do you bring to the table to improve the performance of the company? Or 
to improve the performance of the school if you're going to be a teacher. They want to know how you're going to help their educational institution. And here, again, you don't want to use some person in your uh, family you, to say, oh, my grandmother is my greatest strength, because your grandmother doesn't get to do this job with you. So I real, you need to go back to the character traits. What are your strengths? Choose several, and then you, you're going to decide what is your greatest strength. Okay, and don't just say one word. You don't want to say, oh, I believe courage is my greatest strength. No, you want to say why or how it developed in your life. Okay, how did you discover that you were such a courageous person? How do you demonstrate this character in your own life right now, today? You want to be short and sweet and relevant to the position. Remember, you want to think about what makes you stand out from everybody else. All right, question number seven often comes at the same time, but not always. What are your weaknesses? Or what personal weakness has caused you the greatest difficulty in school, college, or on the job? Whatever you do, don't say you don't have any weaknesses. Select one or maybe two professional weaknesses and explain how you have worked hard to change that weakness into a personal strength or at least into something positive. That's the whole key with weaknesses and failures or things that seem negative. You can turn those negatives into positives. If you haven't turned it into a positive yet, you're looking at your weakness and you go, oh, this is one of my weaknesses, but I haven't really been working on it. You need to think about that now, okay? Think beforehand how you can turn this negative or this weakness into something positive. Because for example, if you think maybe being shy is one of your weaknesses, okay? But being shy has helped you to learn to appreciate um, people who are introverts and helped you also appreciate people who are extroverts. So you've begun to realize that differences, not just similarities, are very important to appreciate about people. There are ways, and I want you to think about in your own life, how you have or could turn your weakness into something positive. And the same holds true, really, for successes and failures, okay? Question number nine, or number eight, I think. Tell us about a time when you failed. It sounds like something really negative. Nobody likes to talk about their failures unless it has taught them something. So when you're brainstorming, you don't just write down all the positive experiences in your life. You write down some negative things. Okay, a conflict that you maybe had with a person, or a job that you didn't get, or a test that you failed. Um, so you want to look at failures in your life, but remember the adage that failures can be the best teachers? And that's what they want to hear. When they ask you this question, they want to know that you have learned from a mistake or that you have learned from a failure. So that's the importance of the weakness and the failure questions. Not to make you out to be some uh, weak person who uh, may not get this job, but to see how you have turned them into positives in your life. So I can't stress that enough. Uh, tell us about a time when you failed means maybe success didn't look exactly the way you thought it would look, but tell them about what you learned. I had uh, someone once tell me that they felt that their weakness was not being able to say no to things. And yet, when she told me about her experience of not being able to say no and her team had to take on this task, it ended up being a great experience for that whole team. And so she learned that maybe not saying no is not such a weakness, but she needed to learn how to balance things more 
And so I thought that was a good example. As she was talking about it with me, she realized how this really wasn't such a weakness. She just needed to learn how to balance because the team had a wonderful experience taking on this project. They learned a lot of things about unity and they had a great end result. All right. So speaking of great end results, question number nine. In some way, they're going to ask you, what has been your most rewarding experience or rewarding accomplishment? Okay. What, and, and I'm not going to actually dwell on this very long because this is so individual. Your most rewarding accomplishment, experience, or achievement is so personal uh, that, that you will find it in your brainstorming of experiences, and that's what you need to ex expand upon. And remember, all of these questions should only take a couple of minutes. Don't be somebody who rattles on and on and on and then gets, gets sidetracked, okay? So um, I'm going to leave that last question uh, to you to really think about the success, that experience that made you feel, yes, I did it, okay? What was that in your life? Okay, all right, a few more questions. Question number 10. Why do you want to work for this company or this academic institution if you're, if you're going to be a teacher? Why? Why do you want to work for this company? So, once again, you've done your homework, you've looked at this company, you know what their mission is, their vision, their values, their purpose, and you are aligned with it. You agree with every part of their mission and you want to be a part of this. Don't be afraid to express this. When I was offered the position at St. Joseph's, the first thing I did was go to their webpage and I read their mission and their vision. And I said, yes, I want to be a part of empowering these uh, young ladies to achieve all that they are meant to achieve. I knew that I was connected and aligned with the mission and the values. So you do not want to say when they ask you this question, well, pay is pretty good. I need a job, so this will do. Even if it's true, <laughs> you don't want to say that, <laughs> okay? You've done your homework, your values match the objectives of the company, and you will be, and you'll, you know that you'll enjoy working there. Um, so besides their webpage, you can also check out their social media. You can also check out Glassdoor, okay? That's where former employees all often review companies. So if anything there really sparks your enthusiasm and imagination and your desire to work there, make a note of it. And that's what you want to mention when they say, why do you want to work for us? Okay. Um, question number 11. They may ask one of these questions. Why would you be a good fit for this position? Or they may say, what makes you unique? Why are you the best person for the job? There are different ways that they can ask this question. Explain why your background and your experience um, would be a good fit for this particular job. What do you feel you have to offer this company? Why do you think that they should hire you? <laughs> okay, and this is what we sometimes call, this is a great time for what we call the one minute elevator pitch. Okay, when you're on an elevator, you have one minute to sell something to somebody. That's why we call it the elevator pitch, but this is about you. So work on your one minute elevator pitch, selling yourself. This is the time, this question, why are you a good fit? Why should we hire you? Okay, demonstrate that your abilities exceed the abilities presented in all other candidates. Use a few descriptive character traits and a concise summary of your experience, the reasons why they should choose you, okay? For example, you might say something like, you know that you can do the work and deliver exceptional results. You know that you will fit in beautifully with the rest of the team. You'll be a great addition to the team. 
you know that you have the combination of skills and experience along with a passion for this industry, there are many things that you can say. It needs to come from your heart. And that's been the whole reason why we've done all of these exercises, so that everything that you say, as I mentioned yesterday, everything that comes out of your heart will be able to express what you're living for and working for. All right, question number 12. These are, uh, these are a few more questions that they may ask, um, so I thought I would go ahead and include them. I looked through some different websites and I chose the ones that I have heard the most, okay? What are your goals for the future? What do you think you'll be doing in five years, they may ask. What motivates you? There are many different ways for them to find out, are you going to be there for one year and then move on? Is this something that you want to continue to do? They want to know you. They want to know if uh, you're just looking for a stepping stone to something else within their organization or outside of their organization. So don't talk too much about your personal goals or your family or money, okay? Stick to what's relevant to the company. And also what you feel is obtainable, okay? Whatever position it is that you're going to be accepting, um, how far can you go within that company? Because you don't ever want the company to think that they're just a stepping stone. You want to contribute to their mission and their goals. You want to talk about becoming a leader, an influential person within the industry, mastering an essential skill okay, that will benefit others. You want to talk about meeting expectations of the company and their goals. These are ways to talk about what you see yourself doing in the next five years. Know how you can advance in different ways within their company or institution before you mention uh, using them as a stepping stone. Do you understand what I mean? I hope if not, put a question please and we can talk about that at the end. All right. What do you see yourself doing? Um, mastering some skills or influencing people, supporting students, helping students to uh, achieve their dreams. Okay. Question number 13. You're almost there. See how you've calmed down. You're not nervous anymore. All right. So, but these could be some of the tougher questions at the end. They may ask you, what did you like? or dislike about your years at college? Or who was the hardest person for you to get along with? Now, you need to be very tactful when answering these questions. Avoid negative thoughts, avoid pointing the finger. Speak very generally about things, maybe um, just overall goals that maybe your college or university didn't include, but you want to pursue, that's no bad light on them. It's just not part of their mission and you're ready to move on. So be very careful about these questions. If they're talking about people, you may want to talk about general character traits rather than a specific person. Maybe a person who um, is very stubborn um, and how you learned to deal with them. So. If they do ask you about the greatest boss you've ever had or the hardest person to get along with or what you liked or didn't like, please be uh, very cautious about the words that you use, okay? Keep things general about opportunities that were, were not offered or a personality style uh, that challenged you and helped you to learn to tolerate diversity and appreciate differences, okay? Outside of work, outside of work, what are you passionate about? So here is your chance to talk about hobbies, what you like to do in your spare time. Hopefully it's a little bit more than reading and watching television because they want to hear about what excites you. Maybe there's a cause that's going on in India that you really feel like you want to speak about and work uh, with people to help them. So you need to think about this answer. I can't put an answer 
uh, in your mind about this, but I do want to encourage you to think about it. Outside of work, are there causes? Are there rights issues? Um, are there really interesting hobbies that you like to pursue? And last, but actually not even least, is this question of, do you have any questions? And the most used answer is, no, I don't think so. So I want to encourage you not to use that answer. Don't say no. If nothing else, ask them, well, I, do, I am curious as to what are the next steps in the hiring process. Okay, I, if, if no other question that, but if you've done your homework and you've looked at their website, you can probably think of at least one question that hasn't been uh, talked about. Something uh, about maybe a department goal. Um, uh, so you don't want to talk about money. You don't necessarily want to talk about advancement, although you can talk about opportunities and um, how, how you connect. So if you don't have any questions about the company, at least ask them what the next step is in the hiring process. Okay, so I have a few final tips, of course. I always have final tips. All right, so I want you to finish in a winning way. All right, my final tips. First of all, body language. Body language. Make eye contact. Don't squirm. Okay, sit up straight. Don't fold your arms. And there's a great video that I show my my students in class. It's a, you can look it up on YouTube, Amy Cuddy's video, Your Body Language Shapes Who You Are. All right? And she states that not only does your body language affect how others see you, but how we see ourselves. And her studies show that striking a pose, like a power pose, before you go in, before you go into an interview, sitting up straight, has a lot more to do with how you feel confident. It affects your brain and what makes you feel ready to tackle whatever comes before you. So body language is not only important for them, but also for you. Okay, use your listening skills. Okay, be an active listener. Listen to what they're saying and the questions that they're asking. Be a good listener. Be an active listener. Nod your head to show that you're listening, that you understand. And if you don't understand, don't be afraid to say so. There are many ways to ask for clarification. Okay, and it's better to be clear than to not understand. Okay, there's a lot of accents all around the world. We don't always understand one another. So sometimes we have to ask for clarity. And you can say it easily. Oh, I think I understand what you're saying, but would you mind repeating that so that I can make sure? All right, so there's ways to handle that. Okay, be interested, not just interesting. Uh, that's actually advice I often give uh, young ladies when they're going to get married. Okay, so you want to be interested in the other person as well as being interesting yourself. I hope you understand what I mean. If not, let me know. Okay, all right, practice. Practice your stories and your answers. Practice with a friend, practice in your room, read what you've written, then say it into the mirror or just in the room by yourself. There is no substitute for preparedness and practice. That's what's going to give you the confidence. Just attending this webinar is a great first step because you've really looked deeply into your life. So I'm really proud of you. All right. Focus on the positives. Focus on the positive. That was a recommendation by Forbes uh, magazine. And, and here's a website, uh, Forbes.com. It was an article called Get That Job, Nine Ways to Interview with Confidence. It's a great article. It's a little old, but I think everything was relevant in that article, and you can look that up and read that. But basically, one of the most important things I think they said was focus on the positive. All right? 
every interview, my friends, every interview is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to grow, to change, to learn, to develop, to become the best you that you can be. So take time to reflect after your interview. Think about what went well, what didn't go well. Plan, learn, do, and assess. Remember that from the first or second day, I think first day, because then you'll do it again. So reflect after your interview and ask yourself good questions when you leave or when you hang up the phone or when you turn off the conference call. What went well? What was I not prepared for? How was I not confident? Was I overconfident? Because it can be for you a win-win situation, even if you don't get the job. Because then that means there's another job out there just for you. If you don't get the job, you can always also ask, what qualifications did I lack? Put your hand up or something. How do I okay. Ask for some feedback if you're not hired. Or how can you improve in the future for a similar job? Okay. Follow up. But don't ever give up. All right. We're going to take some questions now. I want to remind you that there's a quiz that comes along with each of these uh, sessions. And that quiz is to help you get the certificate, but also to remind you about some of the important things that were stated in each webinar. All right, thank you so much. And I look forward to answering the questions at hand. Okay, we have lots of questions. So let's get started. I have one question from yesterday that I need to address. Is working experience grammatically wrong? And uh, work is experience that you have had on the job, right? So you're going to list it as work experience, professional experience, professional history. When you use working, it's an adjective that describes a person doing a job. For example, I could say that I'm a working woman or it could be described something that's functioning. I have a working knowledge of the Russian language. So uh, use work experience, professional experience, or, or professional history. OK, let's get started on the questions. How to overcome tension and fear? Well, as I have mentioned several times, I, I, I think it's worth another mention. Preparedness and practice are two of the ways to lessen your fear. Um, but I want you to know that there is always still going to be what we call, you know, a few butterflies in my stomach. I had it before I spoke here, and you're going to have it. And that's OK. It's a little bit of nervous energy that is good. But you can take a few deep breaths. And you can also be ready to answer. And that's why your homework in all of these different situations is so crucial to help you feel confident and help you feel prepared. Also, the way, and, and somebody else has asked about body language, the way that you're sitting and standing is very important uh, for yourself as well as how you look for the other people. So when you're standing confidently or sitting up straight, you're going to feel yourself. Uh, more confident, not just look more confident to the other people. So body language kind of works both ways. All right. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other questions. Somia asked, uh, how should one reach to the interviewer's thoughts while answering a question? Well, uh, again, you know, being prepared and understanding why the interviewer is asking you that question is a good way to understand their thoughts. What is it that they want to know? So you have, uh, today we have gone over what I feel are, you know, 10 to 15 of the most popularly asked questions. And if you have 
thought about them, then you know why they're asking that question. What is it that they want to hear from you? And so um, also being a good listener, being an active listener and uh, is also an important part of trying to reach to the interviewer without a while you're answering the questions. Okay, Kyati asked, um, what should we say if they ask, why did you choose this job? Um, and that's the same as why should we choose you for this job? Or why did you, what, what influenced you to choose this career? So when you're brainstorming your experiences and even your time in college and even growing up, what were things in your life that made you think, yes, I want to do something to travel or I want to do something to reach uh, the people who uh, are working for other companies like in human resource management. So you need to think about why did you choose this job in particular or this career? So it could go either way. All right. Partha Sarati asks, kindly explain the difference between meaning and purpose of the question in the interview. Well, I think meaning and purpose are very much related. Uh, why does the interviewer, why is the interviewer asking this question? What is the information that they're looking for? What do they want to know about my character? So the meaning of the question is very much related to the purpose of the question. What is it that they want to know? All right, and I think this is the same person, Partha Sarati, asked about the growth of the individual in proportion to the growth of the organization, and can we use the word loyal as a strength in this situation? Okay, well, loyalty, loyalty, of course, is a strength. Um, and it means that you have been a faithful uh, person, a faithful employee uh, during a particular growth season. And so, yes, I think that loyalty could be one strength involved in this situation, but I think there's some other characteristics involved here. Uh, for example, steadfastness or determination. When a company begins to grow, is the employee growing with the company? So have you been steadfast as the company grows? Have you been adaptable to the different situations that the company has encountered as they have been growing? Um, have you been determined to accommodate the different situations? So you can see if you're looking at your own growth in proportion to the growth of the company, there are different characteristics that you might be able to determine uh, to use. Uh, loyalty is just one of them. I, I, as I said, steadfastness, determination, um, accommodation. Um, so there are other strengths that you can see in, in that situation. Sahiti Keri asked, which type of body language should we maintain during the highly professional interview? Okay, well, body language, remember, includes gestures, includes facial expressions, includes the, your posture, uh, includes the tone of your voice. So there are a lot of things to consider. And that's why it's so important to practice a professional interview. Sit up straight. Now you can practice with a family member, you can practice with a friend. And I really want to suggest that you do some practicing. Have your friends ask you, so what do you think is your greatest strength? What, inter what uh, weakness has kept you from obtaining uh, the goal that you really want to achieve because then you have to really think about it. How am I going to answer that question? And if you're not prepared to answer the question verbally, sit down and write it so you can really think about it. You should have an answer at least for every question that I just asked. Yeah. And then there may even be more and others. You can always even Google some of the unusual interview questions people have asked because certainly there are many more interview questions. Thank you. Right? So you want to sit up straight. You don't want to cross your arms because you want to be open. All right. You want to be open to listening from them, to receiving um, uh, what they have to say. So we don't uh, usually uh, cross our arms or our legs, but you can cross your feet. Um, you want to sit up straight. You want to have a, a somewhat of a smile, but it doesn't have to be, a, it shouldn't be a fake, big, uh, 
all teeth showing smile. And uh, you want to have eye contact, that's part. And somebody else, I think I'll answer that question now because somebody else asked about eye contact. Eye contact is just that. Your eyes meeting the other person's eyes, showing that you're listening, showing that you hear what they have to say. You might nod your head, okay? So there are many aspects of body language uh, that you want to make sure that you produce. Uh, and if you're a person who uses their hands like I am, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you don't want to be overly enthusiastic Okay, you want to uh, be professional looking and professional sounding. So that's a, a good question. Thank you, Sahiti. Um, uh, Suhitra asked, what are the important things we should follow during interviews? The most important is to listen well because questions are often asked differently, but they're still looking for the same answers in the questions that we looked at today. Okay, so they might find uh, other ways of asking questions. As I mentioned, uh, somebody might ask, so what, in what situations do you use the left side of your brain? And in what situations do you use the right side of your brain? All right, so they want to know about your creativity or your analytical side. So, um, so listen well is the first uh, answer that I have for following. And second, I'll probably say it half a dozen times today, be prepared. Be prepared. Do your homework. You know the job that you're applying for, the qualifications, the company, the mission, and the vision. Okay, Ragul asked, how should a person overcome fear during the interview? And I think that we have, uh, have uh, touched on that many times. Take a deep breath. Be prepared. Sit up straight. Be interested in the other person. Be interested in the company. Let it be, remember communication is two way. So even though they're asking you a lot of questions, you can interject with some questions and you are certainly responding to them. Um, and as I said, there'll always be some element of fear. I'm afraid a little bit of some of the questions that you might ask me <laughs> right now. Okay. Okay, Partha Sarati asked about time and stress management. Uh, time management uh, means that you know how to take the time period that you have and used it, use it efficiently and effectively. So if somebody asks you about time management, they want to know that you are a person who looks at time, what you're going to finish in what amount of time, uh, and how you uh, uh, block out times for certain things in your day so that you can accomplish everything that you want to accomplish including time to breathe and uh, relax. I'm not very good at relaxing, my husband says, but uh, sometimes we do have to actually um, manage time for that. Stress management is when you are under stress and you have deadlines and there's people talking to you from all areas and you're trying to manage this stressful situation the employer or the interviewer wants to know how do you manage that? Okay, so maybe you have an office and you allow one person at a time to come in and ask their question. Maybe you have a suggestion box and then you will deal with those questions as they come in. The employer wants to know how you take care of this stress, how you manage it and how you deal with it in a professional manner, okay? Uh, another question about fear. If there's something more specific, please email me and I'll be happy to, to answer that. All right, so someone has asked about dress code. Now that's a really good question. So I'll, let me talk to the ladies first. All right, ladies, uh, you, uh, even guys, you need to look at the organization that you are applying for and what is the traditional dress that they are wearing there. So if for example, where the university that I work at, we uh, the, all of the professors wear saris, and I wear a sari as well. So if I were going to go for an interview for a professor's job at this academic institution, I would wear a sari. So uh, look at the organization and how people are dressing. Always choose the conservative side, all right? So I think it's perfectly okay to wear a kurta 
you can wear a salwar and palazzo pants, but as long as they're a little bit on the conservative side, choose, uh, choose not patterns, but plain colors, uh, rather than a busy pattern or something that is very distracting. So you always, you don't want anything to be too revealing and you want to always look professional. I think in a situation for an interview, it's a little bit better to be overdressed than underdressed. And so guys, keep that in mind when you're interviewing. Um, you probably will want to wear a suit, at least a shirt and tie. Um, but most of the time for an interview, it's better to be, you can always take off your jacket if you find that the people that you are interviewing with uh, are less formal. Okay, that's a good question. Good question. All right, somebody asked about strengths and weaknesses, and I think they asked this before we uh, tackled that question. And um, so uh, if you have more questions about strengths and weaknesses, please be sure to ask me. As far as weaknesses and failures, I want you to look at those in your private time and, and think about how you're working on them in your life because even in regular life, we want our weaknesses to uh, not keep us from obtaining our goals. And so uh, when you have a weakness, how do you uh, deal with it? How do you try to change it into a positive? And that's what you're going to explain. So for example, I had someone tell me once that their weakness was they didn't know how to say no to people. And that does sound like a weakness, doesn't it? But yet, as she and I talked about it, I realized that she was worried about overloading her team. And in the end, when they took on an extra task, they learned so much and they learned about unity and they helped one another. So in the end, it wasn't so bad that she didn't say no. So you want to talk these things through. Okay. Uh, Cartil, how can we maintain stress? Well, I don't want you to maintain it too much. I want you to learn to manage it, <laughs> all right? And not maintain it because if you maintain too much stress, you'll, um, there might be a tipping point and uh, you may not be able to handle some situations. So you want to learn the best ways to manage and reduce your stress. Uh, Rena asked, how do we stay confident by being prepared and knowing yourself? And that's why I've had you do exercises about looking at yourself and your experiences because you have unique qualities that you want to exhibit concerning the job that you're applying for. And if you have looked at those things ahead of time, you'll be able to match those and you'll, be, and you'll feel confident. Suppose someone performs well in an interview. Okay, uh, okay, this is a question and somebody else asked about this. Um, I think it was, yeah, I'm, somebody, oh, here it is, Kamali also asked about panel interviews, group interviews. Well, talk about something that is sometimes intimidating, right? You have three or four people in front of you and there you are all alone. So, um, you're going to have to try to manage your fear and feel confident. Look at each person. Try to, uh, even if one person asks the question, what's very important is that you look at each person at some point. You, you need to speak to all of them, and that's the most difficult thing. So no matter who asks the question, look at them at first, and then look at the other members and uh, try to have eye contact with each one if they have other questions. That's the best advice I have for the group or the panel interview, is to not focus on just one person, but you want, it to, you want to try to make it a group of all of them are for you and wanting to hear about you. Lots of questions about nervousness and um, I want you to remember that being prepared is the best thing for nervousness. All right, we still have lots of questions in just a few minutes. And I want you to remember, if you have questions that are not answered today, there is an email address 
on the brochure, please write that email address and it will be forwarded to me or if you have my Language Center email, uh, you can also write me directly. I will answer your questions. So um, I'm sorry we are not going to have time for all of them. How can we be positive? Vindya Sri Barma asked this. How can we be positive when there's just a total negative situation happening around us? Well, I know that it is sometimes hard to be positive. I am a positive person in the long run. And so I try to see positive things in negative situations because I realize that uh, things change. Things always change. And um, uh, not to sound cliche, but God is always working, right? And so we want to look at situations through the eyes of other people and not just have our own perspective. And I think that helps us to be a little bit more positive and to think that even in this, what looks so negative, the, the end result might be positive or I can handle it in a positive way. So if you're not sure about positive aspects of your character, then you need to look at that a little bit more. And also how you can look at situations, we talked about this the very first day, um, through different, a different lens to have a different perspective and not see it as, as quite so negative. Things look pretty negative right now, don't they? But we know that we are developing our character, we're preparing for the workforce, and we are doing things that, that can help the end result be more positive. If, if an organization just totally shut down during COVID-19 and did not think about the positive marketing trends that they can establish during this time, they would die, wouldn't they? But instead, they look for opportunities so looking for opportunities, uh, there's a Chinese symbol that um, yeah, we, I have seen that people use for crisis, but what it really means is uh, uh, windows of opportunity that you find uh, in a dangerous situation or in a dangerous wind. So look for the opportunities. All right, um, there was a question, Partha, Sirati had about how do you handle professional jealousy and contribute to the growth of an organization? Now, something like that probably wouldn't come up in an interview, initially at least not for a fresher, but um, I, I want to just say one thing about this. How do you handle professional jealousy? Uh, when an organization is growing, we want to look at our own position to help others and to work together as a team in order to accommodate the different situations. And jealousy about somebody else's position is kind of a waste of time. So instead, we want to look at our own selves and how we can help other people with their strengths and weaknesses in order to help the organization grow and change. So I hope that is a little bit of an answer, all right? What? Um, What can we expect from you in your first three months? So this person asked this, if the interviewer asks you, what can we expect from you uh, during the first three months? That's a great question. So uh, what can they expect from you? you? They can expect a learning, open-minded um, person to learn every, as much as they can about the different people, the different positions, how the organization works to accomplish its goals. So the first three months is going to be a lot of learning, isn't it? Uh, maybe a helping hand. Maybe as a, a fresher, somebody first coming into a job, you'll be able to serve and help other people with little jobs so that you can learn more about the organization. So I think that would be a great answer to that question. All right, I have only a couple more minutes. And let's see. Partha Sarati asked also about different types of interviews, telephone, digitized, group, personal, and uh, all, there are all kinds. And even if it's telephone, I think I mentioned this during one of our uh, lectures, even if it's telephone, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself to look and feel professional and confident. Whether you're having a Zoom interview, a telephone interview, a uh, face-to-face interview, whether it's formal or informal, um, 
some of the same questions are going to come up. They're not really that different. They just take on different forms. And as far as informal, I wouldn't uh, prepare too much for an informal. You should take every interview fairly seriously and, and um, be formal and not to use things like gonna and wanna and yeah. You don't ever want to uh, put your guard down. Those are, those are ways that you speak English to your friends and your peers, but not uh, to professionals. So, uh, and the next question Kamali asked was about do's and don'ts, and that's exactly what we're talking about. So, do be professional. Don't be, use a lot of slang and uh, a lot of idioms. Do listen to the questions. Don't be distracted. Do sit up straight. Don't slouch over. Uh, do sound interested in the company as well as interesting uh, your own, sounding interesting yourself. So those are a few do's and don'ts. Um, a professional approach to dealing with adverse situations. Well, everybody is a little bit different, but I think a very professional approach is to have a plan. Think about how you are going to handle this adverse situation. And so that's not very specific, right? But take time to evaluate the situation, analyze it, uh, uh, talk to either a trusted colleague or someone who is in authority over you about the different possibilities, and um, spend time with yourself looking at it critically. So uh, that's how I would approach an adverse situation. And if they ask about salary, and I, of course, have said, don't talk about salary, don't talk about money. I never ask uh, about money. Myself, I don't usually even ask uh, till the end because I want to base my opinion on, or my desires on something other than money. But if they ask you, you have to be prepared for that answer. Um, are you willing to take any salary if you want to get your foot in the door and then work your way up? Or is there an amount of money that you just cannot accept no matter what? So you have to answer that question yourself. And decide on the bare minimum that you will accept so that um, you, if you know that you have to have a certain amount for your rent, you would say, well, I can't make less than this because of needing money to live off of and pay my rent. Okay. So, uh, Joy Paul, thank you for coming back. I remember your name. How to answer a question if we don't have the answers or we don't want to answer? Well, good question. Um, I think you have to answer it in some way. If you don't want to answer it, maybe they're asking you a question that you feel is just not a legitimate question to ask in this day and age. Um, how you would uh, treat women in a situation, or how you would, uh, how you would uh, do something, and you don't want to answer. Uh, you'd have to answer in some way, and so I think you want to think about the characteristic that you have that is like opposite of that. Okay, so. You could even say, that's a difficult question for me to answer because I'm a very open-minded person and I always want to treat people equally. So you have to answer it in some way. You can't say, I don't want to answer that question. Okay. So um, you might need to go, what we say, what do we call it? say, beat around the bush. You might have to beat around the bush a little bit, but you want to say why. Okay, you can say this. That's a difficult question for me to answer because I'm I'm all about human rights and uh, something like that. So um, think about that, and uh, we can talk about that more <laughs> online or in an email. Good question. And if you don't have the answer, try to think about what they're what they want to know about you because you do probably have an answer in some way. Okay. Uh, Difference, Somya wanted to know the difference between a hard worker and a smart worker. Okay, uh, somebody who works hard is determined and diligent. Somebody who works smart is efficient and effective. 
okay? So you can use technical terms if you want. You know, in this day and age, we say I have a smart TV or I have a smartphone. Um, and think about what characteristics go with those things. Uh, but that's the, the main difference that I see, okay? Uh, what about if you're nervous, Jisha asked this question, if you're nervous and you forget or you mumble or uh, you don't say clearly what you're speaking, one of the last things I said in the tips is to be, don't be quick to answer, all right? Slow down. Confident people are slow and thoughtful. So if you, feel, if you felt you said something and you don't feel that it was very clear, then just stop yourself and say, um, could I repeat that? I'd like to say that in another way. That's called negotiating meaning, and that's absolutely fine. You want to make sure that you were understood. So just ask to, um, but take your time in answering, okay? I'm afraid we have to stop. I want to remind you of this. Can you see me? The email address for the Language Center, the SJC Language Center is L-A-N-G-C-T-R dot S-J-C-W at gmail.com. And that will come to us at the Language Center, and I will answer your questions. And I am so thrilled to have been with you all, and I just want to say Jaheen. Good afternoon, all the participants. Good afternoon, all the participants. And I hope you enjoyed the session, the third day session also, success in interview. And the questions which we were, you were asking was very much enthusiastic for us also to answer. And it was very nice, I think. Uh, thank you, Vicky, for a very lively program that she has uh, done the three days. The three day sessions was really very nice and uh, the participation also was very good and the responses we got is, is also very positive. Uh, so regarding your uh, E certificate and this today's session quiz would be addressed at the end of the uh, after the vote of thanks. Just be online and find out how to get your certificate. Okay, That would be done only after the vote of thanks. Now I request Sister Lata the Assistant Professor, Department of English, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear participant. I hope you remember me. I am Sister Lata. I presume from your comments that you had excellent, meaningful, and useful sessions. As someone put it, Gratitude is a quality similar to electricity. It must be produced and discharged and used up in order to exist. So here I am to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the Department of English, St. Joseph's College for Women Autonomous, Vishakapatnam. I express my gratitude to Dr. Sister Shaiji, our principal, for motivating us to conduct this program. We thank you, sister, for your constant guidance and support. I extend my thanks to Vicky Hay, English Language Fellow of the U.S. Department of State, now an alumna. We are indeed fortunate to have Vicky with us. Thanks for being part of the family of St. Joseph and for being the resource person for the three-day international webinar. I am sure the participants will agree with me if I say that you enthralled us with your language and communication skills. Thank you, Vicky. I would like to thank Dr. Bhaskar Sudha, head the Department of English UG, and Dr. Nalni Datta, head the Department of English PG, for being the pillars of this webinar and for meticulously planning and organizing this webinar. I also thank my other dedicated and responsible colleagues, Ms. Veena Spandana, Sister Katri Koti, and Ms. Pramila Rani for their hard work and untiring efforts. Thank you all. A special thanks goes to Sister Mary, the Secretary of the College, Sister Hema, the Vice Principal, and to Dr. P. Sharada, IQSE Coordinator, for their support. I sincerely express my gratitude to Mr. Srinivas 
from the Department of Computer Science, Sister Nancy, our videographer, and Mr. Pavan for handling all the technical issues. Without you, we would have not achieved success. Thank you. I also thank Mr. Appal Raju and Mr. Srinivas Rao, our electricians, and all the office staff for their assistance and timely help. Last but not least, I thank all of you, the enthusiastic participants, for being part of this program. I wish you all the very best for your future. Before we part, let me give you some instructions. Please follow them. A while from now, along with the quiz, you will send, we will send you a feedback form to your registered email IDs. You will get your e-certificate only if you fill these two forms. Please kindly type the correct email IDs so that you will be this, get your certificate to these particular email IDs. And if you come across any problems regarding your e-certificate, kindly contact us through the mail english at the rate of and phone number double nine four double eight double nine four eight two. I repeat the mail IDs and the phone number english at the rate of and phone number double nine four double eight double nine four eight two. Thank you once again on behalf of the college. Stay home. Stay safe. Jai Hind.